Good morning once again, dear the participants of this uh, conference and discussion. Good morning, dear guests. I'm honored to be here today, today to lead uh, this panel discussion, overview of partners, achievements and opportunities for cooperation. Today we are here to look at the very important um, event the 25th anniversary of development cooperation of Latvia. Our uh, participants of this panel discussion have uh, prepared their um, their speeches, and I would like to give the floor to Eva Ratsenai, director of the Riga Graduate School of Law. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for uh, the invitation to take part in this conference. During this conference, we are celebrating Development Cooperation of Latvia, the 25th anniversary. And Riga Graduate School of Latvia is involved in uh, such projects already 10 years, and we would like to share our experience and also talk about some challenges and maybe share um, our experience. As the minister mentioned before, Knowledge is also a thing that we can share, and uh, knowledge is our strength, and therefore we are uh, orientating um, to uh, different education programs. We have a long-term educational program where we attract additional financing, and we also have special tailor-made uh, programs with our partners. Within these 10 years, we have uh, worked together with uh, 20 cooperation countries, especially with Eastern Partnership, with Central European uh, countries, with Moldova, Armenia and Georgia, public administration, civil society and also professionals of um, academia are our, our cooperation partners mainly. As you can see in the presentation within these 10 years, we have seen and uh, we have educated more than 1,000 uh, partners in our programs, and uh, this number is uh, on the increase. And this is also one of our targets to, to increase this network and to use not only their professional knowledge in their countries, but also to bring some knowledge back to Latvia. Within those 10 years, we have uh, implemented uh, programs uh, for over 5 million euros, and uh, we are also expanding the financing. We are um, changing the proportion uh, financed by Latvia and uh, increase the part of financing that we are attracting from uh, foreign donors. So far, we have been working with, uh, in cooperation with several governments, uh, foreign governments. We have experience with uh, the government of Norway, the Swedish Institute, and uh, the biggest partner is uh, the United has been the United States. Um, in the late last years. The uh, main programs that we have been implementing for more than eight years and uh, that we are uh, re implementing um, several times per year are programs for professionals from partner countries uh, with relation to public administration, civic society and academia. So we are basically attracting and combining our teachers, especially within the um, realm of EU law, those who can share their experience and also share the best practice of Latvia. Our aim is to harmonize these theoretical uh, educational programs and to provide also um, transfer of best practice and knowledge. And uh, we implement uh, visits to public administrations both in Riga and Brussels. One of, uh, and of course we can brag about our successes, so we have uh, seen a very great interest in the participation in our um, programs and therefore we are really evaluating the previous experience of our participants so that we can ensure that uh, the people gaining knowledge in Riga and Latvia can be used uh, very successfully in their target countries and uh, this is the way how we want to ensure mm, the best quality of this experience. We are also 
uh, we we have a network of more than 1,000 participants, and uh, this allows us to evaluate whether we are doing our uh, programs in a correct way. And uh, we also um, follow the further career paths of our participants. We have also had uh, several short-term programs. Uh, we evaluate the wishes of our potential partners. We um, provide support and financing. We have um, implemented uh, several programs in order to um, prevent corruption in Ukraine, uh, in helping them strengthen their administration. Central Asia is a, a, another focus point for us. Uh, we have worked quite a lot with Central Asia, especially uh, sharing our experience, promoting good governments and uh, preventing co uh, corruption. We have uh, extensively provided distance learning courses on EU law and economy. And uh, we are very pr proud to implement, together with our partners of uh, Sweden and y Ukraine, and namely this is a project about uh, strengthening uh, Ukrainian knowledge about uh, EU law and uh, EU integration. So which are our um, biggest challenges and vision for the future. As I already said, uh, we are uh, basing our programs on uh, education, so profession quality and availability of participants is very important for us. We have to take into consideration the specific traits of, uh, of the countries that our participants come from. Working in such countries as Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia, we have to take into consideration uh, the availability of professionals that can come to our programs because we want to attract the best of all and, their and maybe um, there might be situations when uh, the employers of those professionals don't want to send uh, away those people to Riga. So basically, we want to make sure that uh, the knowledge they gain here with us is used to the best possible in their countries. Our quality of evaluation of partners' needs is also very important. The situation is uh, getting better with every year because sometimes um, from our potential partners um, in the first talks um, we cannot judge uh, what their um, needs are but uh, gaining more experience has helped us uh, to provide this quality we are working with several countries with several donors and each of them have uh, their own needs and expectations and uh, therefore we have to adapt the, the programs with the needs of our donors and uh, the political preferences in their countries and therefore we are also trying to make sure that um, if, uh, the, concentr if uh, the most participants of the group come from a specific country we have to adapt the content of the program so this program is not as static as it used to be. Uh, we also want to see a long-term impact and uh, thus we make an assessment of the programs implemented. We have uh, built a network of our uh, participants. We see that they continue to cooperate among themselves and we can see that uh, their knowledge and their contacts can be useful also for Latvia and not only their countries. And we would like to invite also all uh, other partners to use our network in case you need contact in our partner countries. The um, reputation of Latvia in uh, development cooperation projects is very good and very wide and uh, there are a lot of us in Latvia involved in these programs. Uh, maybe each of us is, is acting in a specific area but we would like to ask uh, other implementers to think about uh, joining forces for specific programs in order to implement larger programs in order to attract more finances. As a positive news, I would like to say in the, uh, thank you in the end to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. During the last years, we've seen a very active uh, 
activities from part of the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in uh, helping to attract new partners and we would like to strengthen these activities and to strengthen this cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Thank you for your special care in uh, carrying out this work and for your openness to new cooperation. We have to go on and therefore I would like to invite uh, Kaspar, Mr. Kaspars Gorks, the Director General of the Employers Confederation of Latvia. Yes, good morning, dear participants. I'm very honored to be here in front of you. Coming to this conference, the first thing that I saw was the poster of this conference and the first association I had was uh, a picture by Kurt Vonnegut, uh, Champions Breakfast. We are really living in a very interesting period of time and each of you have to has to be a, a, a champion in order to help the others. I represent the Latvian Employers Confederation and uh, we are the main partner with relation to um, to, um, we are the most influential organization uh, representing employers. We are uh, representing 44% uh, of the employees employed by members of a corporation and therefore um, our involvement uh, in and the development cooperation is, uh, can be divided into three blocks. First of all, as a confederation, we look as, uh, at the ways that we can cooperate and uh, take part in the implementation of certain projects. Previously, we have seen many successful projects with, our, with one of our partners in Ukraine. We are um, working on uh, ensuring that uh, support programs for Ukraine are simple, manageable and uh, involving uh, as many participants as possible. On the other hand, we are also involved in uh, evaluating these projects every year. So we evaluate uh, the, uh, the visions of, uh, of those who um, elaborate these projects. And uh, thirdly, our biggest capacity is, of course, our members. And um, in my very short speech, I will mostly speak about how our members could be involved more in the implementation of these projects. Our members are getting involved in uh, different development cooperation projects themselves. Their activities have been um, on a very high level, especially we talk about uh, Ukraine and other prog programs, but um, for our organization, the most important thing is to help more and more members of our confederation to get involved in these projects. And therefore, from our part, from the Latvian Employers uh, Confederation, uh, we look at the development cooperation of Latvia as a tool of diplomacy. It is very important to strengthen our reputation, uh, how our country is seen, and uh, each country has to take its load during these difficult times. It is um, a good feeling to be part of this uh, global game. It is very important um, for our uh, reputation and also for our diplomatic goals. Secondly, quality issues, because with these projects we want to show that Latvia can uh, introduce something that is really useful and therefore the aspects of quality also by assessing several pro projects is uh, very important for us. And the third thing is of course income because um, each of the projects is related to, to, to financing and uh, our members, organizations, companies 
also needs to understand the, how they can contribute and how they can um, combine their financing with the financing from partners and also um, get some income and profit. We have uh, asked our members as to what would increase uh, their um, involvement in the implementation of uh, different projects. And they have noticed, uh, noted that the assessment, quality of assessment of projects has been very important for them. Have the targets been reached within those 25 years? Um, I have read several documents, assessment documents, and I believe I'm one of those who is really keen on reading documents. And you can get a lot of information from these documents. Also very interesting details that have to be um, translated so that people can understand them. So the quality aspect is very important. Is quality really assessed? And um, from our part, we are very actively involved in order to ensure that the quality is something that represents Latvia on the global market. How and uh, and also uh, the assessment of projects after implementation is very important. We are involved in the assessment of the projects and. Uh, and very often we receive questions what uh, the achievements of a certain project are and, um, and and people ask us well what is the effect from this project so these three aspects would be the ones uh, strengthening the trust in this whole process and uh, for the sake of order, I think it would also involve uh, a lot more representatives, a lot more um, participants, and uh, reduce the fragmentation that we um, that we often see from part of our members. Very often, our members uh, choose to um, implement projects themselves and not uh, in cooperation with partners. And I think this is something that we can change. In total, if we speak about projects as such, then uh, a big word that I would like uh, to um, remind you from our members is uh, the notion of responsibility, because the quality of, and the implementation of the, these projects, also um, assessment of the projects, this involves a lot of responsibility, first of all, uh, internationally, because uh, it is important for us to, to keep the good reputation of our country, because we are being looked at as a democratic country, so we have to be accountable for what we are doing with our finances and how we are implementing these projects, but also responsibility internally. As I said already before, it is important to have good projects, good project documentation and, uh, and regulation so that we can build trust also for those who are carrying out these projects. So this is it from my side. Thank you very much for, for having me here. I'm very happy to be part of these projects and for implementing them and assessing them. And I hope we have a lot of interesting projects ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can only agree that just by implementing these activities and projects, we are creating the reputation of our country. So we really must think a lot how we are improving the reputation of our country in every step. The next speaker is Zane Kaufelde, who is the External Relations Advisor of the Latvian Association of Local and Regional Government. Uh, we are very happy that you could join at the very last moment in this panel discussion. Good morning. Uh, Ms. Mudita Juchne, who is the General Secretary of the Latvian Association of Local and Regional Government, uh, she really wanted to participate, but unfortunately she could not be due to health reasons. I will share with our story as the Latvian Association of Local and Regional Government it marks its 25 years of existence and more, 
uh, the sorry, uh, it's Latvian uh, cooperation history that has marked its 25 years history, and we have participated a lot in this process. We share our experience with our partners, with our neighboring countries and many other countries, so we have achieved a lot during these last years. You could say that it's like going up in the mountain from uh, where you're at when you begin, uh, in, uh, when you see the mountain before your eyes, maybe it's not so clear what kind of path will it be and what kind of steps you will have and what you'll have to do. But we have worked tirelessly with our partners and we have managed to do this. The principle of our cooperation is very simple. We are sharing with what, what we have experienced ourselves, with what we have created, and we are teaching them what we know ourselves. One of the main things that we must mention is that we have helped to create similar associations uh, of local and regional governments in Georgia and other countries, and right now we're work working very closely with Uzbekistan. Our cooperation activities in Latvian uh, development I think it's very useful here to show some photos in this regard. This is one of the most recent activities we have had where we have been sharing our good practices with uh, developing countries in the spheres that are important to us and also to them. For example, sewage system and system of um, uh, different other things, how to work with the youth, how to uh, improve the involvement of the youth by implementing different activities, etc. Here you can see photos from different activities, both what we have organized here in our association and also in our partner countries. I'm not going to go through our extensive history, but I would just like to underline our recent uh, success history, uh, success stories. And it, one of them is our success story in Uzbekistan. We have had a cooperation project to lessen the impact of climate changes and help uh, to mitigate these effects in Uzbekistan. We have been working on this project last year and also this year I, we had just had a visit in Uzbekistan, so it's all very fresh. Uh, we are working with the movement Uxalish in Uzbekistan and their goal is to improve the policy of uh, effects resulting as of climate change and to also improve the knowledge of the society of the effects of the climate change and also to improve the involvement of the society when implementing these projects. It's a win-win situation for both of us, both for us and for the partnering countries. The Latvian Association of Local and Regional Government has come up with guidelines on how to prepare the plans for climate change on a local level and by using these guidelines we have uh, more than 500 people have been trained in Uzbekistan who are continuing to train other people. So all in all, almost 2,000 people have received such training. We are now working on implementing these projects in two regions, specifically in Uzbekistan, but since these plans are considered as very serious there, then the country will be working uh, on these plans in the whole territory of Uzbekistan, not only in these two regions. We are also gaining something from this because we have understood and we have learned how to draft uh, climate change guidelines and we should also take more into consideration this, as uh, this aspect. And we have also started thinking about uh, adaption to climate change and we should be working uh, ourselves to implement such plans here in Latvia. Of course, as many others, we have uh, been focusing also on our partners in Ukraine. It's very important to, uh, that such cooperation in Ukraine is very important and 
it's a win-win situation once again because we can both learn from each other. Very recently, just last week, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Uh, to, together with the partnership of Ukrainian cities and other platforms, we had a research visit in Ardaji in regards to sustainable development, and that was linked with the sustainable development goal number 16. By looking back at, at the past and by looking very brightly into the future, we can say that we can say uh, we can say that the development uh, uh, development is like dancing tango because you both partners need to know the dance and they need to cooperate in order to achieve the, re the goal. If it's done, then the public can watch the dance uh, and enjoy it and they can also see the results of hard work. The same thing is with development cooperation. In order to reach something, the country and also the local and regional governments must align their goals, must understand the common goals everyone has uh, in common and then these activities will be more fruitful and there's a higher chance that more society will be involved and that the results will be more impactful. Last year, which was the week of sustainable regions, we invited the youth of Latvia to dream about what they would like to see in the year of 2030, which is the year until which we have to reach our sustainable development goals. They had the possibility to work on their dream cards and to write their wishes for the year of 2030. For us, the colleagues of the Association of Local and Regional Government, if we would have to make such a wish card, then we would say that we want more equal positions in the regional government because in regards to knowledge, we are just as advanced as any others, but when talking about technologies, we receive a bit less support there. When looking into the future, if this work is being coordinated and the cooperation is happening among all Latvian partners, then this is possible and cooperation can just extend and become more efficient, more useful, and it's important to underline that everyone is in a winning situation here, both those who receive help and those who provide it. Thank you, Zana. Thank you for underlining the win-win uh, situation of development cooperation, meaning that it's a, uh, you, it's, it's a good situation for both parties. The next speaker is Liga Sitcher, who is the director of the EU Projects Department of the Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very thankful for the provided opportunity and to provide and to share the story of the Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry linked to the history of last 25 years. I always like to show the scope of our history and I just want to say briefly what it is that we do. We are the largest business support organization. We have more than 3,000 members. We are working actively on an international level as well. We are a part of ICC, International Chamber of Commerce. We are members of uh, this uh, chamber as well and we're in a more specific organization which is the Hans Parliament which unites many different organizations from the Hanseatic region and we can also have uh, projects there. We are actively implementing international projects uh, for at least last 15 years and that is because 
we had our 90 year anniversary and we had a small research on what has been done during the last years. Unfortunately, archives are archives, but we didn't get past 15 years. However, it's been told that there have been a lot of international projects before that as well. We are supporting, strongly supporting Ukraine both uh, on the lo local and international level. There have been cases that Eurochamber excludes from their list of members, Russian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and also the Belarus. Here I, these are our achievements in the development cooperation during the last 25 years. We can say for sure that we have been working for a very long time in the development uh, corporate in the Council Board of the Development Corporation. Our very first project started in the year of 2021, which is called Latua, which whose goal was to give the possibility for Ukraine to enter the EU market. And Latvia is the entering point uh, in the EU market. We are still continuing this project. We have the continuation of it, Latvia 2. Uh, we, I will speak more about the results in the next slide, but all in all, we're very happy and very proud. I could be able to talk about this on a separate presentation as well because by providing professional webinars to NGOs in Ukraine and the private sector, all of this helps them to understand what it means to be in the EU, what are the quality uh, standards and requir requirements, what is the business culture in general, what it means to have a transparent business going on in the EU. This is very important for them. And during this project, we're also organizing businessmen meeting and thus uh, real corporations arise from this project. I'd also like to thank here the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for financing both of these projects. In, five, in these five pictures, you can see five identified success stories where we have started cooperating with Ukraine uh, because of this uh, project. We are seeing such huge uh, entrepreneurs like Latvius Vineris, Maxima Depo. Latvius Vineris uh, provided veneer uh, to uh, Ukraine and by using this wood material, they can create new furniture that they can put in uh, refugee centers. We also have many success stories with Interpreneur Mexman and others. These are just five, but there are others. For example, Wind Energy Association has now an agreement with the Ukrainian Wind uh, Energy Association. In the upcoming weeks, we will be signing an agreement and uh, we will, a cooperation memorandum, us, the Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we will uh, sign a memorandum with, with others. At the end of October and at the beginning of November, we will have some uh, new uh, projects available, new meetings for Ukraine, and there are a lot of people who have applied. In general, we have 30 to 40 participants who are participating in the webinar. We are very happy that we have a very proactive audience from Ukraine. They ask a lot of questions, even though we are, we are far away from each other. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs invites to use other programs of development cooperation. And I can say that during the last 15 years, we have implemented a number of projects. A large part of it are related to the EU. We have three programs there, which is the sustainability workforce, but we have also implemented 11 projects with, corpora with cooperation in Ukraine to attract financing from uh, different regions of the country. We have been working uh, in our partnering countries uh, with the help of different EU programs 
for example, Erasmus and others, so that we could strengthen our partnership. The goals have been different, but the main underlying goal is to improve their development, both in our country and in their countries. We have a, a huge network of partnering countries. We receive funding to organize different activities, for example, webinar of, of a specific country or business breakfast and others. Here are some examples of good practice practices. We are focusing on small and medium enterprises. We are using different programs, uh, uh, programs of different funds. We're always inviting to use an innovative approach, for example, coaching activities. The main focus that we have is uh, thinking of target groups. Here are some challenges or maybe possibilities. I'd like to underline here that we have a pragmatic side to this. All these development cooperation projects are international projects. As my colleague said, it's like dancing, really. We have to understand, uh, we have to think internationally, we have to understand boundaries, the financing system and systems can differ. We also have to think of different geopolitical reasons like war and safety. We have to be we have to think of digital literacy and understand how project management works in a different country as well. And then the other side is is what I'm always inviting people to think of is this is the business culture of that country so that you don't uh, make some mistakes just because you didn't know. In the future, we are inviting you to continue your work, even though dancing is hard and dancing tango is quite difficult. Here we can, this is a way how we can present really well our organization, our country, not be afraid to speak out loud about this. The key is to respect the partnering country and the environment it's in. Most problems we notice is when you go to a different country and you will teach them how to do it correctly. This is the first mistake that you can do at any international project. The first thing you have to do is have mutual respect and only then they will be able to listen to our story, our experience and implement that uh, at their home. Then also do not be afraid of large projects different financing programs offer different possibilities but just by talking just by being brave we can improve our impact we should not be thinking that we're a small country and we have no impact it's not true we can be very impactful and very supporting i'm also inviting you to use classical things that have been tested like guidelines, webinars, training programs and also implement some modern activities because our practice shows that just by implementing like a coaching activity that can be very that can give very good results. It's also necessary to look at the good practice of other programs. For example, how projects have been implemented there, what is their structure like for policy making uh, projects, etc. Thank you very much for your attention. I'd like to thank once again the organizers for the possibility to share my experience. As you might feel, I'm able to continue for a long time and more. Thank you, Liga. Thank you. From your presentation, I will take the fact that development cooperation can be and is something with very practical results. And also to, to stress the diversity of cooperation development. The, and now I would like to give the floor to Ina Sivaivar, director of the Latvian Platform for Development Cooperation. This is also one of the organizations organizing this event. Hello to everyone. Thank you for uh, having come. Thank you for joining us on the internet. I can see many faces that have been involved in uh, development cooperation 25 years ago and I also see a lot of new faces and therefore I believe we have a very diverse audience both here and also on the internet. 
our organization is also very diverse and uh, we can give you perspectives that haven't seen before in the previous presentations. If we see our organization Lampas, we will be celebrating the 20th anniversary this year and, and this is not a small achievement for Latvia. We are one of the NGOs uh, in Latvia and uh, I try to divide my speech into three phases as to how we have succeeded and uh, how and this also elucidates how a development cooperation policy in Latvia has evolved during those 20 years in 2014 we tried to convince people that uh, this kind of a policy is necessary but when I started to work in Lapas uh, 12 years ago then uh, the budget for uh, development cooperation was 200 euros, not 200,000, but uh, 200 euros. If we look at it transformatively, then I could say that the first uh, stage was uh, initiative, the stage of initiatives. No, not many people knew about development cooperation. Lapas one of, uh, was one of the organizers organizing different visits. We had a visit in uh, Moldova and uh, we had a very good impact. We worked a lot uh, towards global education, uh, elaborated training programs uh, on development cooperation and other global issues. I also want to remind you that this was uh, a time when people were afraid of the word global. And of course, um, we tried to uh, develop the first project starting from 2014. Uh, we have seen a rise and also a widening, an enlargement of Lapas. Uh, you probably know that uh, Sustainable Development Goals were um, passed in 2014 and uh, you, you all know that NGOs uh, have been very active in uh, moving forward to uh, Sustainable Development Goals and uh, human aid was one of the areas where we became involved. We have uh, raised funding for different projects in other continents. And of course, uh, from uh, uh, Russia's invasion in Ukraine, we have understood that we have to be involved also in uh, civil protection issues. Uh, I was also involved in uh, the uh, training activities NAMES and um, trying to gather information how we can be useful and uh, what kind of experience we could uh, take from our partner countries and take, uh, take this experience to Latvia. So we are not only donors, we are also receivers because we have to uh, learn a lot also from our cooperation partners. Uh, the number of Lapas partners has increased greatly. We work with a lot of organizations. Uh, we don't believe that uh, development cooperation is created only in Riga. We cooperate with uh, uh, libraries in other parts of Latvia, with different youth clubs in the regions. And those who remember uh, Latvian presidency in the Council of Europe, we were uh, against uh, Brussels, we wanted to have our central event in Ligat, in one of the regions, together with the people. And uh, as of this year, Lapis has become more of a support provider. We have uh, received 13 new members during this year, and this is quite a lot. And these are organizations that are involved in development cooperation quite actively. And we are very glad to see that uh, these companies want to join and support others. And as of this year, Lapis will start uh, being active as a fund. We will start supporting other organizations so that they can uh, implement their own activities. Many people have mentioned several figures. We also have some figures to share. One million euros have been raised and uh, this is not state funding. This is the funding that we have attracted ourselves because um, uh, we are not a company, so we, we don't have income and our own resources. We have to attract financing. So I would like to say that this is a, a very, very useful one million. 107 projects. This is only implemented by LAPAS and not uh, 
counting those we have implemented together with our projects. We are working also in Latvia. Of course, we want, we can, we could work also in um, just in cooperation with our foreign partners. But I think this is a very useful thing that we are developing our own civil society in Latvia. We have been very bold in discussing different themes, for, for example, foreign migration, optimization of um, taxes. We have uh, been, uh, we have involved citizens and uh, we have strengthened democracy by our example. You can also see a very wide range of partners, both in Latvia and internationally, because we are defining ourselves as a, as a link between the global and local areas. Um, our, Many people say that, uh, that that they love all their children. Of course, we love all our 107 projects. But I would like to talk about two projects. One a project is called Rupnica, uh, and this stems from the Latin word care. And uh, this project elucidates the diversity how we work. So basically, we work with uh, young people in less populated areas, attracting those who usually don't uh, get involved in discussing uh, bigger themes. We have very uh, diverse uh, members in LAPAS. We have uh, members who are united by something that, uh, that they share, some values that they share. Our youngsters participated in protest activities because this is also a part of uh, of uh, civic active of civil activities and then of course we um, support political change some of our young people went to Iceland and uh, implemented uh, different political activities People from NGOs are experts. We are experts in what is happening to people nowadays. And I would like to mention that Latvia is a very good example in this area because this is how we show ourselves. And on the level of the United Nations, we have showed, we have shown that uh, each uh, report on uh, on uh, sustainability goals, uh, there has been a report from NGOs, and those 20 minutes shared. Um, those 10 minutes shared uh, in, in, in reporting have always been shared between uh, ministers and NGOs. And a good government's, uh, governance is uh, another important point. I could talk a lot about good government uh, governance principles and uh, I will have also a panel discussion as a moderator, therefore I will not uh, go deeper into this, but I would like to mention that uh, we also have very strong uh, NGOs who would be happy to gain access to the programs and we have spoken about this with our partners, but if we talk about transformative uh, development cooperation, then we have to admit that uh, that we should um, make sure that uh, the financing gets to the partner countries and uh, therefore localization is very important and uh, we must have um, a different approach to development cooperation. The second thing is a social impact assessment for partnerships. We certainly agree with that and we are currently working uh, on a report. We are um, reading all Excel tables. Similarly to our colleague, uh, Mr. Gorksh, uh, we are basically assessing from, this, uh, from the side of NGOs uh, all the figures. The implementation of new mechanisms is another challenge. The, if we see the support that we provide to our partners in Ukraine, then we must uh, underline that uh, uh, we are doing this because this is based on our values. Then transparency um, is another important point. And uh, another new thing, which is part of uh, development cooperation, is the establishment of humanitarian aid system. We don't have such a humanitarian aid system here in Latvia. Um, in 
times of crisis we depend on others we don't have our own capacity and we don't have a system how we would help uh, or provide humanitarian aid to somebody else we had a, a conference in february together with the ministry of foreign affairs with relation to humanitarian aid systems uh, but uh, there is a long way to go thank you for giving me the opportunity to report shortly on what we do thank you innocent it is very difficult to, to stop uh, a co-organizer of this conference, right? I think the main thing that uh, the Latvian Platform for Development Cooperation has done um, is to um, explain how development cooperation works. And uh, you have been successful in that. And now, Anita Krum, the director of the Central Finance and Contracting Agency, Thank you, dear participants. From the uh, Central Finance and Contract Agency, I would like to say that uh, we are an agency for development cooperation. Uh, we gained this uh, status in January 2022, but uh, like uh, um, our partners who expressed themselves uh, today, we are also taking steps in uh, the implementation of development cooperation. We can only hope that uh, within those 27 years we have gained a lot of experience in uh, administering the, fund and the funds and uh, Our wide range of uh, partners with, uh, in, within the um, state administration uh, will help us to strengthen our role. So we are the main partner in a strategically important development cooperation projects and also to involve uh, external donors. If we look at the Latvian level, then uh, one of our aids uh, one of our aims is to be the national contact point, gathering information about the expert knowledge available in Latvia and also about uh, the um, opportunities to implement projects and uh, different partnerships, um, develop different partnerships for project implementation. And uh, one of our future aims is to become a consul consultative and advisory organization for uh, those interested in uh, implementing support projects. The overall target, which is the most topical one, is to undergo the accreditation process in order to gain the status, the DAC status. And uh, this is something that I would like to talk about more in my next slides. Uh, the accreditation of pillar means that the European Commission and also um, auditors evaluate the, pot the potential, the internal control system of the potential uh, partner and this audit is uh, being uh, carried out uh, according to several pillars involving uh, the control system, uh, bookkeeping, cooperation with uh, partners, uh, data processing, grant procedures and all other procedures. So procedures and also practical application of these procedures are, is being assessed in the agency. We have successfully undergone this process. We have uh, received a positive audit report on the eight pillars examined and uh, now we are acting uh, we are waiting for the final decision of the European Commission and uh, indicatively it will come by the end of this year. And this means that we can uh, start with um, the financing of European Commission with regards to indirect administration. We are also a member of, of the network of the European Development Cooperation Agency's uh, Practitioners Network. Um, this, this gives us an opportunity to uh, take part in uh, pr practitioners' meetings. Uh, the aim of this uh, 
practitioners network is to strengthen cooperation between agencies and uh, share best practices with different agencies and also um, to work with uh, the European Commission. We are also a member of the PN associations, which means that we can uh, also take part in different um, meetings of the PN network and we can learn a lot from uh, the experienced development cooperation agencies. What else we have done? We have uh, Establish the National Register of Experts on our web page. Uh, you can see a link to this register, and uh, we share this with our partners and all those people interested. So, if you want to get involved uh, in development cooperation as experts, then um, there is a questionnaire of experts where we can uh, gather all information and what kind of uh, expert knowledge is available in Latvia and who these potential experts are. Um, we have more than uh, 230 potential experts in our national register and this database base is being updated on a regular basis and uh, I think when we once we get more active in the uh, development cooperation as an agency, we will update it even, even more. However, if uh, somebody is interested in potential experts, then we, we are very happy to share the information uh, that we already have in the National Register. Talking about uh, projects, and uh, this year our um, agency has started uh, getting involved in, uh, with support projects for Ukraine and uh, and uh, we have uh, 2.4 million euros for restoration of social and uh, education and infrastructure in Ukraine we have established cooperation with uh, NGOs with two uh, NGOs, um, Businessmen for Peace and Your Friends. And this is about the restoration of infrastructure in the area of Chernihiv, um, educational um, and uh, healthcare institutions. And these um, objects of infrastructure will be restored by help of those two by the financial support of those two Latvian companies that I mentioned. As was already mentioned from the speakers uh, this morning, uh, we the Center Marta is very actively involved in providing support for Ukrainians and for Ukrainian women, and this is a very important support and uh, and we are also cooperating with the center marta in order to provide help the cabinet of ministers uh, will have to decide on uh, financing from latvia for the year 2025 and 26 we have been actively discussing with the uh, region of Chernihiva on the objects, uh, the reconstruction of which will have to be supported and also uh, looking for donors in order to attract financing. We are also in, involved in cooperation with other cooperation, uh, development cooperation uh, agencies in order to raise uh, the opportunities for Ukraine to um, cooperate with other agencies and to attract financing from the European Commission. Talking about the projects carried out by our agency, our first pilot projects have been started in Uzbekistan and here this cooperation uh, has been very successful with uh, the Uzbek um, public administration representatives and our very first uh, development cooperation project was uh, entitled Good Government Supports to the uh, Raising Capacity of the uh, Public Administration in Uzbekistan. We have met several times uh, here in Latvia. We have organized uh, also training and, uh, and, and different uh, 
meetings also in uh, Uzbekistan and we are working on uh, documentation in order to assess uh, the results of these projects. The second project that we have started in Uzbekistan is uh, implementation of uh, administrative reforms uh, for, for the prevention of corruption. We are uh, working with, together with the uh, Baltic Media Excellence Center and the uh, Rika Graduates uh, School of Law. And very soon we will uh, have uh, some um, real project activities started. Talking about uh, the projects for, for, the, for our future, our future directions. There are several areas that we would like to, to get active into, but uh, digitalization and cyber secu security in Central Asia and Africa is uh, on top of the list. We can see cooperation with our experts in France, Expertise France. We are currently discussing how we can uh, get involved in such projects up until the moment when our agency um, would be accredited and could implement uh, the project uh, independently as part of the consortium. And uh, another pilot project that is uh, pretty much developed yet is uh, support for agricultural reforms in Eastern Partnership and Central Asian countries and uh, we are actively working on how to attract uh, EU financing to these programs. Talking about uh, digital transformation, I would like to um, mention several parallel activities uh, where we have joined uh, within Team Europe initiative we can see that this is a very important initiative and latvia can be a very active partner within this initiative we have uh, involved in uh, the digital d4d hub and within this in initiative we are working in developing di digital transformation and innovation projects and also working on ideas how to promote gender equality in the ICT sector. And now the final slides, I would like to mention two points. First of all, talking about challenges, we have to understand that uh, as a development cooperation agency, we are um, competing with uh, big agencies, but we are not afraid of that because Latvia has uh, can provide good expert knowledge, which is uh, useful also to our uh, partners who have a lot more experience. We are competitive and we can compete with the um, big agencies, but of course I understand we have to do quite a lot uh, in the project a phase and we also need involvement from our project partners and also from different sectors and uh, very often work related to project initiatives does not guarantee a result of a project really being implemented but this is an, an initiative that we have to take in order to get the projects. Another challenge challenge from our part that we often see is uh, the availab availability of leading experts, especially in state administration. It is quite hard to attract those experts and therefore we would like to say thank you to all state uh, pub public administration organizations that are ready to get involved and to um, provide their experts to our cooperation project. Cooperation is actually the key word, and several of you have mentioned this. From my part, I would also like to say we are a small country, and it is necessary for us to cooperate between uh, several institutions in order to carry out uh, projects successfully. We have to join our forces so that we can, um, so that our projects can grow, and uh, so the so that we can attract more financing. 
it is very important to um, join with other partners abroad and other agencies and from our part we have started a very successful cooperation with uh, the Baltic Development Cooperation Agency. We have also signed the Memorandum of Cooperation and joining forces on the Baltic level also ensures that we are a bigger player on the uh, European stage and of course then we can carry out larger projects. It is necessary to share knowledge and experience. We are very grateful to those international partners that we are working with uh, currently and uh, that, has, that have shared their experience, our neighboring Lithuania and also the Czech Republic. We will forge uh, better cooperation with the Spanish agency and also in Latvia. Thank you very much to all the partners who have shared their valuable experience and uh, I think we are very much oriented towards uh, cooperation and we are hoping for good results. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your experience and also the cooperation with NGOs. Thank you very much.